G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Aussie Starcraft, where we are stoked to be bringing you some sweet Heart of the Swarm action. It has been an amazing month for Starcraft. The last couple of weeks have seen some amazing competition in line with that awesome competition. We've decided to bring you a Zerg vs Protoss series, so in the top right hand corner of Overgrowth, as our Red Zerg player, it's going to be Starbuck playing for Team Mouse Sports. In the bottom left hand corner, one of the most difficult to pronounce names I've seen lately, it's going to be Sajak. So, obviously a Scandinavian name for those of you that don't know Sajak. He's actually a 15 year old player from the Netherlands, so very impressive that someone as young as he is is actually competing in a tournament of this caliber. And uh, he's actually been making a bit of a name for himself recently, playing very well. So, 2013 saw him competing in a lot of online tournaments and smaller events, but uh, this year in 2014, looking to really uh, break through. So, excited to see what he can bring us in this series. It has been a little bit since we've cast some uh, Zerg vs Protoss action. So, thought I'd bring you this series. It is three games and best of three series. So, uh, without uh, giving out any spoilers there, we will see uh, what these two have in store for us. Looks like fairly standard sort of opening here on Overgrowth. As you can see, we have our first few overlords moving out across the map. Not actually electing to go for any different scouting paths, so this one may well be breaking off here. Always a good idea to check for proxies. We can see that uh, Starbuck being very cautious has done a full loop with that uh, probe through most of the beginning scouting proxy locations and the Overlord will now veer to the right, so the only potential proxy is here and it's it's not the greatest location, so Starbuck going to be fairly confident that he's safe here it's Jack actually going for a very greedy opening here with the Nexus first and uh, before his gateway, so it's, it's quite quick, very bold, particularly against a Zerg player, Starbuck luckily hasn't gone pool first, he has actually gone hatch first, and in response to seeing this Nexus first, he's going to go the greedy move, and I like it, Starbuck going to throw down a third hatchery, so I love that response to this quick gateway, he knows no aggression is going to come out of the Protoss in the next couple of minutes, it's always a great idea, throw down that third hatchery, get the extra lava, and it gives you a lot of flexibility in your opening, so... We have uh, Starbuck here actually being a bit cheeky, going to be chasing out, managing to pull a few of those drones for a few seconds. Always always nice to do a bit of harass, and Starbuck going for gold with that drone, but uh, that work is going to be delegated to gas and should be able to recover most of its shield in time. So Starbuck just trying to buy as much time as he can with this with this uh, irritation on the drone, but Jack not having a bar of it. That Nexus on the low ground is going to be finishing up, and we do have a cybernetics core on the way as well. So potential for lings to come out in the next 20 or 30 seconds, but as you can see with only with two hatcheries popped and no queens thus far, only potential for a couple of zerglings at a time. Those Jack will need to be very careful, particularly with the amount of uh, money he's funneling into those drones that he's chrono boosting out. If he's not too careful, he may actually fail to wall this in in time. We can see that as that pool finishes up, that uh, Starbuck's been compiling gas, going to be throwing those queens out very quickly. That third hatch just popping up now, and the second queen's going to be on the way. So it's going to be quite a quite a greedy opening from Starbuck to ma match this rather greedy opening of Jack. It'll be interesting to see what these two players are able to make of it. This wall off is a bit of an interesting shape compared to what we usually see. Looks like Jack will wall off with a pylon and uh, one more building, perhaps a gateway, or maybe even a. St uh, Stargate or Robo, the Stalker is going to chase this Overlord, unfortunately for the Overlord not going to get a whole lot of intel, if it could have made it to the high ground, may have gotten away but uh, heading heading back for a scout into the main base, unfortunately it's going to be able to get too much done it will go down there momentarily supply blocking Starbuck but uh, a few Overlords on the way should clear that out, Zergling Speed is on the way as well and uh, we could well see a few Zerglings try to exploit this this relative greed of Jack, though with with the opening that Starbucks elected for, probably fairly safe to to throw down uh, throw down a few drones. Want to get a few Zerglings just in case uh, Jack tries something like this. Quick uh, Zealot and Stalker and Mothership Call can pose a little bit of a threat for this queen. There is plenty of Zerglings on the way. We have six still on the way and. Uh, the two that just popped out there. Got to be careful though, the Zealot will be able to focus those down quite quickly. This Queen though, very important to keep the Queen alive. Queen's the only thing that can actually shoot the Mothership Core if you're not careful. Can be very, very easy to catch that with the Stalker and Zealot. Unfortunately for Jack, the Stalker does go down and uh, the Zealot follows suit. 
quickly after. Mothership Core is going to make a break for it. Got to be super careful that that doesn't go down. If that Mothership Core dies, you do end up in a whole lot of strife. Nice proxy pylon location tucked in there behind the, behind the gold base. Mothership Core almost getting a few more Zergling kills, and we do have quite a collection of Zerglings here at the front base. Unfortunately, Force Jack, uh, he's uh, got no units actually work on these Zerglings, so Zerglings actually may take out both these pylons if they're not careful. We have a Sentry Warp in is almost done. We'll be able to force field one of these to save the pylon. Unfortunately, the second pylon will go down. Probe going to warp, warp in a second pylon to keep this alive, but uh, got to be careful with two pylons forming uh, different gaps in this wall. A lot of potential for this wall to actually break. Pylon's gone down, so no more units can be warped in except from the one gateway on the high ground. There's a lot of speedlings actually making their way into this expansion. It's Jack on in damage control mode now, pulling those probes trying to ensure that these Zerglings don't do a massive damage to his economy. We see that two workers have gone down so far, Starbuck managing to focus a few of these drones down. Unfortunately unable to get a, get a nice surround on these drones. Drones continuing to work their way down to the low ground. We do have four drones going down. Photon Overcharge being thrown down at the Nexus is going to start to clean up these Zealots. Unfortunately you've got to actually finish that wall off otherwise some more Zerglings may actually make it in. Zerglings continuing to give these zealots the run around, focusing down probe after probe. We have six, seven that have gone down now. A few more pylons going to be coming up. Fix, fix that uh, supply block that we'll be seeing from Jack any moment now. We have four gates on the field, but a big swell of zerglings making their way across the field. As I say, if there's one thing I don't like from Jack, it is this wall off. One of the reasons we see players present that front wall of gateways is because it 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 doesn't provide these the weaknesses that we're currently seeing. Starbucks found this proxy pylon, looks like he's going to be able to focus these zealots down. Unfortunately, not in the greatest of locations, able to get surrounded. These zerglings will take them out along with the pylon. So he's going to severely limit Jack's present presence out on the map, and uh, Starbuck actually continuing to drone up quite heavily. If we look at the income tab, it, it, the harvest tab is 40 to 41, which is quite a testament as to just how many uh, probes that Jack had chrono boost out early on in this game. He's lost seven. He's still tied up with our Zerg play, which is almost unprecedented. It's not something you see every day. We do have a proxy, a proxy, sorry, a macro hatch coming up from Stargate. If it was a proxy at this point in the game, it would be something truly crazy going on. But uh, Starbuck pulling up that macro hatch. Obviously needs that to keep his units flowing. He has used quite a lot of units. Uh, actually I'm going to take out that pylon at uh, an inopportune moment. Actually almost focusing his own mothership core down there. That could have been could have been catastrophic if he'd, if he'd managed to finish the job. So a little bit of a misclick there. Something you want to be very careful of. Third base has a zergling camped on it but Jack really will be looking to take that any moment now. A few roaches starting to make their way across the field. Roach speed and uh, Burrow actually on the way as well, so interesting choice, not not something we always see this early on in the game, but I've got to say, I love it, Burrowed Roach play, so much fun, always great to catch your opponent off guard, looks like the Zerglings will clean up this pylon, it was uh, thrown there rather out in the open, surprise not to see it established somewhere tucked up along this right hand side, and it uh, looks like Starbucks already cleaned out these rocks, so he's going to have lots of avenues for these units to move around, Big gateway attack coming out from Jack now, and uh, these these roaches uh, with Burrow could potentially lay some sort of ambush here. We have a few pylons coming up now. Plenty of gateways for Sir Jack, and he looks like he's going to commit to this. Actually, I think we have the Templar Archive, so potential for some Archons here if he's uh, careful. Lots of Zealots coming in. These Zerglings will die so quickly to the Zealots if they're not careful. Zealots are still completely unupgraded as it's been just such an aggressive game. These roaches actually doing a lot of damage to this force. We have some Archons morphing in, but uh, I think a little bit... Uh, is Jack just getting a little bit excited here? Quick to engage, and this, this roach, this burrow tech is going to do so much damage to Jack. Unfortunately, he's got no observer out on the map, so while he can focus down a lot of these units, cute burrow micro on the queen and these roaches is doing so much damage. Roach is actually able to burrow to prevent a lot of this damage. And uh, Sir Jack's going to GG out of the game. So a little bit quick for game number one there. Uh, arguably the game uh, well, it wasn't wholly over. We have a lot more damage taken on Sir Jack than uh, on Starbuck. But uh, I, th I think the main main uh, reason for that is these Burrowed Roaches just being very cost efficient here. Even managing to keep that queen, these two queens alive in the fray. So just, just a great job from Starbuck. Plenty of Roaches on the field. So very likely that he could have counterattacked and uh, no potential for a third base anytime soon. So 
great game from Starbuck in game number one. Hopefully S Jack can bring it back in game number two. He has been doing some great things lately, so super excited for him to see what he can achieve here in 2014. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Sorry the videos have been a bit sporadic lately. For those of you who don't know, in my uh, other life I'm an accountant. At this time of year it is tax time just about to kick off. So, uh, you know, things get pretty busy, but I will be trying to upload as frequently as possible. And uh, for those of you who don't know, the GSL final is on. For us here in Australia, it is at the wonderful time of 4am in the morning. So uh, those of you early risers who are up to see it, I would heartily recommend it. It's going to be amazing. And uh, yeah, there'll be plenty more StarCraft action coming up over the weekend. So sit back, guys, grab a thing of popcorn and settle in. It's going to be a great weekend.